In this video, we are going to implement the logic behind dragging an item inside our inventory. Okay, before we start implementing our draggable item, let's take a look at our prefab, our item UI. Now, our item UI has this UI inventory item script and an image that is our background. And this image has a Raycast target. Basically, this tells our canvas that we can click on this image. Let's check our border, and our border also has the Raycast target, but we do not want to click on the border, we always want to click on our background. So what we want to do and what we want to take care of is to always check those and uncheck the Raycast target on objects inside our UI element that are not taking part in the event system, so clicking, dragging, so on, but those can as well block those events. If we have this border and we click on the border, we may want to block our access to the events of our UI inventory item. So let's select our image. For our image as well, we want to uh, uncheck the Raycast target. For our background text also, we want to uncheck it, and for our text, I don't believe that we have such an uh, option here. So basically what we did was uh, prevented our event system to check the uh, or to trigger the click event on the image or on the text of, of the quantity or on the border. We only will detect it for our item UI background. Okay, so with that done, now what we want to do is let's enable our inventory and inside our canvas what we have is our HP slider, but also our in-game menu. And the order here matters because if something is below, then it means that it is rendered in, rendered in front of everything else in our UI. Now, our in-game menu has the horizontal layout group that places this inventory page in the center where we want it. But what we want to have is a draggable item that is not necessarily bound by this horizontal layout group. So it will need to live inside our canvas outside of the in-game menu game object. So let's select our canvas, right click, let's select UI and let's uh, actually let's create an empty game object here. And this will be the empty game object, let's right click on it and uh, rename it simply, let's call it mouse follower. Because this will be the item that will follow our mouse when we drag our item uh, from one slot to the other. Now, since this will basically be the same thing that we had with our UI item prefab, so let's select our prefabs item uh, UI and let's drag it inside our mouse follower. Now, one thing that I know is that I do not want this uh, fully opaque, so I'm going to select our item UI and I'm going to add a uh, component called canvas group and I'm going to change the alpha of everything here to about maybe 0.34 or maybe 0.50 something like this so it is not completely opaque we can see beyond it but we can also see it as well now another thing is that we do not want to click it we do not want it to uh, call any events that we had described here of course nothing will be listening to those events described in the item ui inside our event trigger and inside our ui inventory script but we still want to have the functionality of being able to set the image as well as being able to set the quantity and to do that we simply need to uncheck on the image of the item ui the raycast target and now no uh, event will be called upon this as well as this will allow us to drop this onto another item inside our inventory because if we call or detect events on this object this, that we drag we're going to block the detection or the raycast will not go through and call on drop event on an item inside our inventory content okay so we have dealt with setting the image and the quantity so that we see exactly what we are dragging now let's implement the drag functionality that will be placed on this mouse follower game object now before we do that let's add here a content size feeder and we are going to set this to minimum size and minimum size so that it is exactly in the center of our mouse follower if, if we select our move tool we are going to drag it from the center point now let's go to our scripts folder right click or actually in the ui right click create a new c sharp script and let's call it mouse follower and let's open it up in visual studio okay 
let me delete this start and update and I'm going to paste the code that we are using here. So to make our logic work, to follow our mouse pointer, we need to have a serialized field private canvas canvas reference as well as uh, we want to cache the camera so serialized field private camera main camera we're going to simply get it once in the awake and we are going to of course have a private ui inventory item item reference so that we can set it uh, set the data of it through the mouse follower this is just for the simplicity so we can get the reference to mouse follower and still be able to use the uh, logic behind the ui inventory item so in the awake, we are going to get the canvas. So canvas equals transform dot root. So this is the root object's root parent of this transform, which is basically the canvas. So we can get the canvas from this game object, and we are going to cache it here. So camera that main basically finds the object with the main camera tag, and the item equals git component in children UI inventory item since our UI inventory item uh, prefab is the child of our mouse follower. We are going to have a public void set the data to set the data because what we need to do basically is when we enable this mouse follower to follow our mouse we need to also pass the data to it so it has the sprite and the quantity of the dragged object so all we need to do is public void set data sprite sprite int quantity and we are going to call item set data sprite and quantity now the whole logic behind following the object will be in the update so whenever this object is active, we are going to first need to calculate the position of our mouse pointer so that we can set it to our UI element. So vector2.position and we are going to fill this value using rectransform utility. Now in the documentation it is described as utility class containing helper methods for working with rectransform. And if you have ever worked with rect transform, you might know you might know that the rect transform is in the screen space, while the game objects in our game are in the world space of our game. This is quite challenging to convert those uh, values between those different coordinate system. That's why we have this rect transform utility. And basically, what we will want to have is a screen point to local point in a rect. And this method basically what it does is transform a, a screen space point to a point in the local space of the rect transform that is on the plane of its rectangle. So back in our code what we call is rect transform utility dot screen point to local point in a rectangle and we need to pass here the rect transform of our canvas so that's why we are adjusting the position for our canvas rect transform canvas transform next we need to pass the position and we can screen pass the screen point as input dot mouse position if you are using the old input system last thing that we need is uh, actually two things is the camera so canvas world camera so actually we do not need to even have this main camera reference sorry about this okay and we are going to output the position so output with the uh, keyword out position which we have defined at the top and we are going to set this position transform dot position equals canvas transform transform point and we are going to pass this position now basically what it does is transform this position into the transform uh, rectangle of the canvas now i am not sure if this is the best way to implement this code but that's what works for me so that's why i have implemented this using this code i'm quite sure that there is a better way to do it now last thing we are going to have is public void toggle bool value and basically what we have is debug.log item toggled with the value so true or false and we're going to have game object set active to value so we can enable or disable this mouse follower using this toggle method okay if you have all this code let's save our script let's go back to unity okay and we need to add our mouse follower onto our mouse follower game object so this is our script and all of those things should be found automatically and right now if this is enabled we can press play and we should see that our object is following our mouse as you can see this is pretty transparent and it works everywhere because right now we are not disabling it but this is the idea so let's stop this and of course we want to disable our mouse follower at the start of our game or what we can do is go to our ui inventory page script 
And since this script will control everything in our UI inventory, we are going to add a serialized field here, private mouse follower, mouse follower. Here what we can do in the awake, of course, we can add this logic mouse follower toggle and we want to set it to false. So we want to disable it when we awake uh, our UI inventory page. Let's slide it down and find our, our handle, uh, well, uh, handle begin drag. And we are going to pass here mouse follower toggle true. And we are going to pass here mouse follower set data. And of course we have only one item that will respond to this ha uh, handle begin drag. So we can pass here the image and we can pass here the quantity. Okay. So last thing that we need to do is of course disable this. So we need to call this same thing when we end the drag. So when we end the drag, we call it false. But of course we can also uh, drop this item. Uh, so handle swap can be uh, toggled as well. But I think that this will also be end drag will call, be called after the handle swap. So let's save this and let's test our logic. Okay. Now one thing that we have, one issue, is that the inventory is a prefab, but we are assigning something from outside of this prefab inside this prefab. So we are going to assign this mouse follower here, but we may want to later on place it somewhere inside this prefab so the mouse follower is a part of the inventory system. For now, let's test it, let's press play. And we should see that now our item is disabled. If we enable our inventory system, we can select our a weapon we can start dragging it and now we have our draggable item following us if we let go the on drag end event will be uh, triggered and as you can see in the debug log we can item uh, we can see item toggle false and we can us uh, drag it onto another item but we are not doing anything on drop item uh, in the on drop item event in the next video maybe you are going to mock the swap mechanic before we start implementing our inventory system logic in the scriptable object so we can actually fill this inventory ui with uh, items from a list from the inventory okay that's it for this video see you in the next one